Hey guys, welcome back. Today let's learn apoptosis in a really simplified version. So by the end of this small video, we shall know the definition of apoptosis, examples of apoptosis, mechanism and stages or steps of apoptosis. So let's learn them one by one. We all know this famous definition of apoptosis and apoptosis is defined as programmed cell death. The meaning of programmed here is that it's a controlled cell death. If at all the cell death becomes uncontrollable, then it results in inflammation and necrosis. Hence, there is no inflammation or necrosis in apoptosis, but still the cell is dying. These are the examples of apoptosis. Apoptosis could be both physiological as well as pathological. Physiological, I can give you two examples. Involution of hormone dependent tissue. The best example is endometrium. It is dependent on estrogen and progesterone. Whenever there is hormonal withdrawal, the endometrial tissue is going to shut off and die. Second very good example under the physiological example is during the fetal development, during embryogenesis, there are lost lots of tissues which are not required in an uh, adult life. All those tissues are undergoing apoptosis. And apoptosis also could be pathological whenever the cell is faced with the DNA damage, which could be because of radiation or cytotoxic drugs, or whenever there is even accumulation of misfolded proteins, or it can even happen in some viral infections like hepatitis. So these are the examples of apoptosis. Now let's understand the mechanism. In order to understand the mechanisms, we should first understand that there are two enzyme systems which are operating for apoptosis to occur. The first one is what is called as caspases. Okay, And these caspases are further divided into two varieties. One is what is called as initiator caspases. These are the one which initiate the process of apoptosis and these are caspases 8, 9 and 10. And then we have something which is called as executioner caspases. These are the one which execute the, the apoptosis and these are caspases 3, 6 and 7. So two types of caspases, initiator caspase, executioner caspase. So once these caspases are activated, they are in turn going to activate one more variety of enzyme which is called as endonucleases and what these endonucleases are going to do, they are going to cleave the DNA which is going to result in denaturation of the DNA. Okay, And then we will also have to know that there are factors which are regulating apoptosis. There are anti-apoptotic factors and pro-apoptotic factors. Usually when the cell is healthy, and the cell is not destined to die still, the anti-apoptotic factors are having an upper hand, hence they are preventing apoptosis. So these include BCL2 and BCL XL. And whenever there is a cell damage and the cell has to undergo apoptosis, the pro-apoptotic factors become dominant and these include BAX and BAK. Okay, so these are the factors which are regulating apoptosis. Now, let's understand the mechanism of apoptosis, like how apoptosis is going to occur. So, classically, apoptosis is divided into two parts. That is, it is going to occur via two pathways. One is what is called as intrinsic pathway and another one is called as extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is also called as mitochondrial pathway because it is going to occur via the mitochondria and the extrinsic pathway is also called as the death receptor pathway because it is going to occur via the death receptor. So first let's try and understand the intrinsic pathway because this is the most important pathway for apoptosis. So let's say there is a cell damage, okay, or there is a damage to the nucleus or to the DNA. So now what is going to occur is 
there is going to be activation of pro-apoptotic factors. Okay. So, let's say this is our cell. Okay. Inside the cell, we are having an organelle which is called as mitochondria. And as we all know, mitochondria is having two membranes. So, one is called as a outer membrane and another one is called as the inner membrane. Okay. On the outer membrane of the mitochondria, so this is our mitochondria. On the outer membrane of the mitochondria, we are having anti apoptotic factors or the anti apoptotic proteins. So these are the ones which are preventing apoptosis. So on the inner membrane of the mitochondria, we have something which is called as okay cytochrome c so let's say this is the cytochrome c so what these anti apoptotic factors are doing is they are preventing the leakage of this cytochrome c into the cytoplasm so now once there is a damage to the cell and there is activation of the pro apoptotic factors okay now the pro apoptotic factors are activated again on the outer mitochondrial membrane so, once there is activation of the pro-apoptotic factor, this is going to produce a channel between the inner mitochondrial membrane and the outer mitochondrial membrane. Via this channel, the cytochrome C is going to enter into the cytoplasm. So, once the cytochrome C enters into the cytoplasm, what is going to happen is, this cytochrome C is going to combine with a P A F 1. Okay. A P A F 1. So, what is this A P A F 1? A P A F 1 is nothing but apoptotic protease activating factor 1. What it is? Apoptotic protease activating factor 1. Now, once the cytochrome C combines with A P A F 1, there is going to be activation of caspase. 9. So, what is this caspase 9? Caspase 9 was the initiator caspase. So, activation of the caspase 9 is going to cause activation of our executioner caspases. Now, activation of the executioner caspases is going to cause activation of endonucleases. So, once there is activation of the endonucleases, what is going to happen? There is going to be cleavage of the DNA or there is going to be denaturation of the DNA. And this is going to result in apoptosis. As simple as that. So, the trigger here is release of the cytochrome C from the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, this is how the intrinsic or the mitochondrial pathway is going to work. Now, let's try and understand what is called as the extrinsic pathway. Okay. So, again, let's say this is the cell here. Okay. On the cell, we are having a receptor. Okay. And this receptor is belonging to a family which is called as tumor necrosis factor family okay or this is also called as death receptor now once a ligand binds to this death receptor and even that ligand is also called as the death ligand what is going to occur on the inner part of the cell or in the cytoplasm is that again there is going to be activation of caspases 8 and 10. What caspases were these? These were again the initiator caspases. So, once there is activation of the initi initiator caspases, this is going to cause activation of executioner caspases and this is going to cause activation of the 
endonucleases and that is going to result in apoptosis. So this is an extrinsic pathway because the stimulus is coming from outside the cell and this tumor necrosis factor family of receptor okay to add two more points to this there are two types okay one is called as type 1 tumor necrosis factor receptor another one is called as FAS so it's as simple as that so we are having two mechanisms intrinsic and extrinsic now let's in briefly discuss regarding the stages of apoptosis okay the first and foremost thing which happens to a cell which is undergoing apoptosis is what is called as cell shrinkage okay that means the size of the cell is going to decrease here Second and the most characteristic feature which occurs after the activation of the endonucleases is nuclear chromatin condensation. What is it called? Nuclear chromatin condensation. Once there is nuclear chromatin condensation, what is going to happen is there is formation of what is called as membrane blebs okay there is formation of membrane blebs so let's say this is the cell what is going to happen the size of the cell is going to reduce then from these membranes there is going to be formation of what is called as like this membrane blebs okay like like these membrane blebs will be formed all over the cell membrane and ultimately these membrane blebs are going to come off and these membrane blebs, when they detach from the original cell, they are what is called as apoptotic bodies. They are called as apoptotic bodies. And these apoptotic bodies, they contain cytoplasm. They contain organelles, the cell organelles, which are tightly packed in them. And they may or may not contain the nuclear chromatin so one thing which we will have to understand here is that the cell membrane is intact the cell membrane is never ruptured the cell membrane is going to rupture in case of necrosis that's the most characteristic feature here what we can see and ultimately these apoptotic bodies undergo phagocytosis by macrophages Androgo phagocytosis by micro macrophages. So there is no inflammation and no necrosis. Okay. So this is how apoptosis is going to occur. If you have understood this video, kindly hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you again later.